The views expressed on this program are not necessarily the views of Lexington Community Radio or its board of directors. The views expressed are solely those of the programmers. You are listening to Off the Cuff. Now, here's your host, Adam Banks. Welcome, everybody, to Off the Cuff. I am Adam Banks coming at you live from Lexington, Kentucky. Thank you for listening to the show, and thank you for tuning in to WLXU 93.9 FM. In addition to listening to us on the radio, you can check out our Facebook live stream at Off the Cuff with Adam Banks, or you can download the Radio Lex app on your smartphone device to listen to us anywhere in the entire world. You can also stream the show live on the website at radiolex.us. Ember Turner and I are both broadcasting from the Deborah Hensley Studios here at Radio Legs on North Limestone. It is February the 16th, 2023. Ember, we are halfway done with February. It seems like 2023 is just flying by already. Just flying by. Did you get a chance to watch Super Bowl 57? I mean, I watched the performance, but the, that's it. America's <laughs> event. America's <laughs> event is what the Super Bowl is. I think most people tune in for the performance, which we'll get to. Oh, yeah. But we got to start the show talking about the Super Bowl. It was this past Sunday, and I don't know what you're thinking. Everybody's thinking, well, that was a long time ago. Well, it really, it's not over until Off the Cuff with Adam Banks discusses it. <laughs> Off the Cuff has to give its own review of the Super Bowl. Adam's review. We'll start with the national anthem by Chris Stapleton. Maybe one of the best renditions I've ever heard. A beautiful rendition. Oh, absolutely. Oh, my goodness. What? I, well, I thought you were playing it. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> you have me so confused. No, it really was. You know, a lot of people said it made them cry. And I was like, I'm not going to cry listening to the national anthem. And then sure enough, there I was. Uh, bringing people to tears with his rendition of the national anthem at Super Bowl 57. Chris Stapleton, a Kentucky boy. Mm-hmm. A 606 boy. Paintsful. A paintsful boy. Johnson Central. Well, did he go to Johnson, Johnson Central, Central High School? He did. Think about that. They've had his football picture up everywhere. So raw, so real, so good. You go on, Chris. Had the whole staff on the Eagles crying. The boo-boo coach was a boo-boo in his self to death over there. Oh, I think he had everybody crying. It was so sad, but it was just, when you hear our national anthem sang like that, it is just beautiful. It's oh, it's gorgeous. elegant. Very much so. But let's get to the game, Amber. It was a, a quite a game. It was back and forth. A one-legged Patrick Mahomes did get the job done. Wait, his ankle really was hurt? It was. He was hurt. Okay, okay. Yes, and he won his second, he won his second get Super Bowl and becoming a MVP again for the second time. The Kansas City Chiefs defeated the Philadelphia Eagles 38 to 35 in Super Bowl 57 this past Sunday, the team's second title in just 4 seasons. A controversial holding penalty by Eagles cornerback James Bradbury gave the Chiefs a chance to run the clock down and kick a game-winning field goal with eight seconds left with Harrison Buckner nailed from 27 yards. So everybody thought that the Eagles won, or the Eagles got cheated. Yeah. And they lost because they got cheated. And I can see why you would think that. There are certain calls like holding Mm -hmm. that you don't call during the Super Bowl. Yeah. It's kind of like... During a basketball game in the Final Four, calling uh, out of box, out of the coaching box on the coach in the last 30 seconds, you just don't do that. Well, when you don't want somebody to win, that's what you do. Right. And yes, it is against the rules that, you know, holding is against the rules, so a rule is a rule, but... It's situational, I feel like, and especially during the Super Bowl. Oh, yes, exactly. Because of that hold, Harrison Buckner was able to shoot or shoot, kick a field goal Mm -hmm. for just 27 yards, a very easy, doable field goal to win the game. 
Hey, there you go. But the Kansas City Chiefs win. Patrick Mahomes yeah. is the MVP. Uh, his girlfriend or his wife is the MVP to me. Why do you Come say on. that? I have never seen a woman be so behind her man, and people can't stand it. Mm-hmm. I love it. Well, I I think that I'm okay with her being behind her man. Yeah. But his little brother. Well, now look. Come I, on. <laughs> getting fame off of yeah. TikTok. I just can't respect people who get fame off TikTok. I, well, TikTok in itself kind of, you, you said it right there. <laughs> so did you tune? Tune in for what everybody tuned in for besides the halftime Super Bowl show. Did you tune in to watch the commercials? Uh, you know I watched the commercials. A 30-second spot cost you this year $7 million. Oh, my God. For 30 seconds. So if you had a 60-minute spot, that's yeah. $14 million. Woo! Very much so. What were some of your favorite commercials this year at the Super Bowl? Um, so first and foremost, I love the Clueless. Uh, Alicia Silverstone came back and reprised Cher. Yes, let's talk about that for a second. Oh my goodness. You know, if if movies can do it and TV shows can reboot uh-huh. these famous movies and TV shows, why can't commercials? Exactly. And I love the fact that they did re- reboot Clueless just for a scene. For just one little, well, I guess it wasn't one little scene. They gave us 30 seconds, like a 30 second wrap up. Here's where Cher is now. Yeah. And I love it. She looked great. Amazing. She, she looked like she could still pull off that role. It still even had that little, like, twang in her voice. Uh, Breaking Bad had a commercial on there. They did. Walter White and Jesse Peekman had a commercial for Popcorners. Uh-huh. Did you see Ben Stiller return as Zoolander for I Pepsi? I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you got to love it when people just kind of reboot. The characters that people love to see. I know last year we got to see like Doctor Evil. Mm-hmm. So you, I got, I love that. Uh, some of my favorite commercials was I like the Pringles commercial. Yeah, when everybody getting their hands stuck in the can. Uh huh. Because who hasn't that happened to? Um, I yeah. thought that P Diddy had a funny commercial with his Uber One One Hits. <laughs> I like the E Trade Baby Wedding commercial. There. Uh, the Jack Harlow had a <laughs> had a commercial. It was pretty funny. <laughs> his was actually really good. Yeah. <laughs> yes, where he dropped out of music to play the triangle. And what it was him and Missy Elliott, Missy Elliott was there. Yeah, and he killed out his whole entire rap career to be a triangle music uh-huh. musician, but Elton John still beat him at an award show <laughs> because Elton John wins for everything. <laughs> Uh, did you see the Paramount commercial with Sylvester Stallone in it? I did. I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, but yes, there was a lot of funny commercials this year. Too much? I wouldn't pay for it. Uh, well, my question is, you know, did you see Tubi had a commercial out? Yes. The free streaming service. And confused everybody. How can they afford that? It's free. It's free. Well, where's it's, that? Oh, my goodness. And they made everybody in America mad, mad because you thought that you changed the channel to uh-huh. Tubi. <laughs> (laughs) the Super Bowl. (laughs) Good one on them. They got it. Hey, they might have won the Super Bowl commercials. They, you know, I still got to give it to Cher, but they were a close second. Then there was the halftime show. Yes. I've come to the realization that Super Bowl performances in general suck. And here's why I say they suck. Because, Amber, there's so much hype behind a Super Bowl performance. There's a lot of hype that goes into it. So we are expecting the best of the best. And nine times out of ten, we're always let down. Now, go back and watch, and you'll say to yourself, I've seen better. Yeah. You'll say to yourself, I've seen better from that performer. Yeah. And I think that we have all of this anticipation, all of this hype before a performance, and when they don't completely just blow our socks off, yeah. we call it a bad performance. And I've come to the realization that Super Bowl performances are mediocre yeah. most of the time. Uh, There's all this hype that goes into it, and it rarely delivers to that hype. And I just just think this year was another case of that. I was not a fan Mm -hmm. of the Rihanna performance. I think, uh, to be honest with you, it was her worst live performance of her career. Yeah. I know she had that iconic announcement that she's pregnant. Uh But my question is, wouldn't that hurt the baby to be (laughs) around all of those lots of music with with your baby in there? You got to look. Uh, all the women who go to concerts when they're pregnant. Mm-hmm. There are so many people who are pregnant that still do their jobs. That's her job. Very true. I yeah. just, I just, I, it has to hurt or damage in some way to be up there a bouncing. And I a, mean, I'm not going to go there because this is radio, but I think that that baby was just fine. You liked it. 
I absolutely loved it. Why? Okay, so a couple of things. She's nine months uh, postpartum. She just had a kid nine months ago. And first and foremost, I know uh, not many women could get up and muster up enough, cur- you know, not courage, but I guess enough strength to get ready. And when I say ready, I mean, you know, I, I assume she's probably like you. She probably had her eye on every piece of that production. So not only is she pregnant, she has a child. And here she is. She's out here. She's up above. She came out uh, very simple. Similar to, I don't want to say Lady Gaga because Lady Gaga jumped, but she came out just like they did last year from, you know, the top. She came down. I thought she sang amazing. Now, I know Howard Stern kind of got on her, said she was lip syncing 85% of it. Howard, you can't even sing to begin with. So, (laughs) Well, I I think what I found interesting about Super Bowl performances, do you know how much the NFL pays the artist to perform at the Super Bowl? Nothing. Zero dollars and zero cents. Yeah. Nothing. They don't get paid anything because they think that it's a fair trade-off for mm-hmm. the exposure, which, I agree. which it is. Yeah, I agree. Because the whole world is watching you. It, it's it's a proven fact that usually if you perform at the Super Bowl, your artist, your sales go up. Oh, I think they proved that with Jennifer Lopez and Shakira. Like, they threw out numbers from them. It was like a thousand percent yeah. over what they had been doing. Doing last year. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's insane. So, it is a bump to your career. It's uh-huh. one of those things you can check off as a milestone. But what's interesting is everything that you see down there has to come out of the artist's pocket. Oh, absolutely. They pay for it. And I understand these people that, like Rihanna, creative genius, and I I think that they have great visions, but sometimes the vision never comes across the right way during the Super Bowl, and I think that's why we're so let down. I love Rihanna. I love Rihanna. I think she's got a, she's one of the best performers in that type of music. Absolutely. And I think she's got so many great hits, Mm -hmm. but I was just very disappointed with the performance overall. Well, okay, you asked me why I liked it. Give me a real specific reason why you didn't like it. I I didn't like it because I was expecting Rihanna. I was expecting her to get out there and just be her sexy self. I was expecting just a just out-of-this-world performance by Rihanna, which made me go back to my original point, is yeah. I think that most of the time we all have all this hype for a Super Bowl performance mm-hmm. and it never delivers. Well, and I mean, plus seven years. That's when her last performance was. So give her a little slack. I think you did good, Riri. Well, I, it's mixed online. So oh, I, I feel like there are more people against my opinion than there are for it. See, so I, I don't. I'm I feel, the oddity. I feel the opposite. I feel like more people are with you yeah. uh, than they are with me. But it, it can go both ways. But that, ladies and gentlemen, was the Super Bowl. Another one in the books. But we still have lots more off the cuff coming at you live after these words. Ladies and gentlemen, stick with us. We will be right back. Off the cuff. Adam Banks here with you. Amber is also in studio with me. The theme that you just heard was from the James Corden The Late Late Show. I bring this up because we all know James Corden is leaving The Late Late Show at the end of this season. But CBS just recently announced that after 28 years on the air, they are going to cancel the Late Late Show. So once James Corden leaves his mm-hmm. show, CBS is canceling it altogether. It is an end of an era for late night television. The Late Late Show has been on the air since January the 9th, 1995, and it was created by David Letterman. It was a post show to his show on CBS. Yeah. You know, NBC has the Tonight Show. Mm-hmm. And then afterwards they had Late Night. Yeah. Well, CBS has the Late Show and then after the Late Show was the Late Late Show. <laughs> so it came on at 12:30 and so many iconic hosts hosted mm-hmm. this show. I mean, you had uh, the first person to ever host it was Tom Snyder. Okay. He had 777 episodes. Craig Kilborn mm-hmm. took it over and he had 1,190 episodes. Ooh. Then after him was Craig Ferguson. He had 2,058, the most of any. Uh, and then James Corden took over for Craig Ferguson and so far he's had 1,162 for a total of 4,733 episodes for the Late Late Show. It is an end of an era. That's a big number. Yes. And I'm telling you, it's the beginning 
of the end for late night television, we've talked about daytime TV a lot yeah. on this show. And we've talked about how the landscape of daytime television has changed just just with formats, but also with iconic uh, host leaving. Mm-hmm. The same thing is happening in late night because it says here that the show, CBS will replace the late, late show with a revival of a game show called At Midnight. Oh. Yes. So they're not even replacing yeah. this show, the late, late show, with another late night talk show. If people did not like James Corden that bad. They took away the whole show. <laughs> they're taking away the whole show. The whole show. And it makes me sad because I've always been a fan of late night. Mm -hmm. If I could have a dream job, it would be to host my own late night show. Well, the late, late show, call us. Well, I I tried. I reached out to the late, late show. Who'd you give a jingle to? Some some executive over at CBS. (laughs) I did not hear back. But Amber, I just love the late night format. I used to love just the format of late night television where it was the host in a suit, Mm -hmm. sitting behind a desk, interviewing other people. You Mm -hmm. had the microphone, you had the cup of coffee there. And it came on late at night. And it was was such a raw show because back in the day, back in the day, you usually didn't see celebrities outside of their movies no. or their TV shows. So when they would appear on a talk show like a late night show, mm-hmm. it was the first time you seen them out of their comfort zone. Glimpse into their real life. A glimpse into their real life. And I, it made me start thinking of some of the most memorable and iconic moments in late night talk show history. Ooh. Let me take you back to the Johnny Carson days. Okay. Some people call him the king of late night. Uh-huh. I used to love it when Johnny Carson would bring on his friends. Yeah. And he would just bring on his friends sometimes for 5-10 minutes and just just talk. Yeah. And it was it created late night magic. Now, they would be sipping. Yeah. I don't know what they'd be sipping on. Use your imagination. But Uh, it was a different era. Oh, It was a different time. And here's just a little glimpse of what late night TV used to be like. Did you ever get the feeling... Did you ever get the feeling that the world was a tuxedo and you were a pair of brown shoes? Johnny Carson can't hold his laughter. I mean, he's he's in the floor right now laughing. And you got people like Bob Hope over here cracking up at, at what he said. Uh, that was George Goble, by the way. People who were from that era that were just complete comedy. I used to love it when late night television was like that. But Amber, let's talk about some of the most memorable and iconic moments in late night talk show history. What about when Drew Barrymore flashed David Letterman? Yes. It was his birthday <laughs> and Drew Barrymore stood up on her, on the on his desk uh-huh. and flashed him. Happy birthday, Dave. That was back when Drew was going through a few things. Oh, and she was the best looking. Yeah. She Woo. Wow, it was like 95ish 96 ish. Oh, yeah. When she was just, she just doing her thing. Doing her thing. She was known for her wild parties. Wait, is this Poison Ivy era? I don't know. She had the real short hair. Oh, no, no, no. But she stood up on the desk Mm -hmm. and flashed David Letterman. It was awesome. Amber, what about the time? What about carpool karaoke? Now, look, I know I I talk smack about James Corden, but I did like that. That was a good thing that he brought. James Corden brought skits like carpool karaoke where he would drive around Mm -hmm. and sing with other celebrities and guests. Oh, my God. Or or sing with other artists. Sing with other artists. Like Elton John, Adele. And he would bring people together, actually. Like different artists bring them together. Yes. To sing together. Here is a clip I'm going to play of one of the most iconic late night talk show moments in history. This is when Jerry Lawler slaps Andy Kaufman. (laughs) Now, just to give you the backstory here, Andy Kaufman and Jerry Lawler uh, went on a late night talk show. Mm -hmm. And this is a record wrestling angle. So the only people that were in on it was was Jerry Lawler and Andy Kaufman. David Letterman did not know this was going to happen. Oof. Jerry Lawler slapped Andy Kaufman. Take uh, a listen. I, you. I could have sued you for everything you're worth. Well, no, I didn't because that's, I'm not that kind of a guy. Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, what kind of a guy are you? <laughs> no. Not the kind of guy you're I'll just be over here. Uh, okay, yeah. We're going you, to you know, pause here concerned. for you station know, I, identification I, and get the hoses out here. Hi there. Hi there, and uh, welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as you can tell, Andy Kaufman is here, sort of, and uh, Jerry 
Jerry Lawler is also here and uh, David Letterman is freaking out right now. Uh, there's some nights I wish Tom were here, but that's not the case. Um, uh, is Andy, are you coming in here again or? I am sick of this You are my friend. I will sue you for everything you have. I will sue your You're a As far as I'm concerned, you hear me? I will get you for this. words on television I apologize to all my kids. I'm sorry I'm sorry but you you're a I think I think I think you can use some of those words on TV I'm not it was awesome because <laughs> Letterman really was thinking this was real. Now, a lot of people at the time, yeah. everybody thought it was real yeah. because of kayfabe. Mm -hmm. Back then, you was not supposed to let people know that wrestling was fake. No, not so at all. So everybody thought this was real, even David Letterman himself. And weren't they leading up to a match? That's what they were doing. They were building, weren't they? Absolutely. Yeah. And here is another late night talk show moment that is iconic. And this is also having to do with wrestling. Do do you remember when Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff from the NWO hijacked oh. Jay Leno? And what I love about this angle is that it started off as real uh -huh. and ended up being more of a storyline. But it started off with um, the, NBO, the NWO making fun of Jay Leno on Nitro one night, yeah. saying that it was a boring show and they were just kind of making fun of him. And then Jay Leno kind of retaliated yeah. and brought out like a midget Hulk Hogan oh. and, and pretend oh, like he was goodness. he pretended like he was beating him up. Well. Jay Leno is doing his thing doing it during a monologue, and he's making fun of Hulk Hogan, and Hulk Hogan breaks through the doors at the Tonight <laughs> Show and hijacks the show. Take a listen. You're all the way home, Hulk. You know something, Leno? You're a real stupid little man. You know, you come out here every week cutting on me, brother. But the, no, no, no. Let me just tell you. The bottom line is this is all serious business, joke man. You cross the line. I cross. I no, no, listen. You cross the line between personal and business. Look, now okay. you're affecting let me, get, me. let me get you a hat, okay? Look, I'm tired of it. He pushes him. Now Eric Bischoff's getting involved. Jay Leno pushes Hulk Hogan back. <laughs> now here comes the staff from NBC. You better get out of here. Just get out of here. So, Eric Bischoff takes over. So, Eric Bischoff and Hulk Hogan hijacked the Tonight Show for the rest of the night. <laughs> I mean, kudos to Jay for pushing Hulk instead of Eric Bischoff. Well, and talk about such a creative storyline, because if you were watching that at home, are you turning the channel? Oh, my goodness, no. If you see Hulk Hogan on there fighting? Well, if you see somebody break onto a show, you're like, oh, I'm not turning. Then you realize it's Hulk Hogan? I'm not going nowhere. We can't talk about this segment of iconic talk show late night moments without bringing up the late night wars yeah and it first started with jay leno versus david letterman for the tonight show mm -hmm. and because of that war it created a, a bunch of controversial episodes of each perspective talk show making fun of one another mm -hmm. but then it happened again back when jay leno he won the tonight show mm -hmm. and it was time for him to retire and give it to conan yep and he said he was going to give it to conan but after he already gave it to conan he decided he wanted to come back and, yeah. and take the show back Oh. So they they fired Conan yeah. and gave it back to Jay Leno. <laughs> no takes, he's back. But Conan, before his contract was up, he had like 20 more episodes to do. Yeah. And it was maybe some of the best episodes <laughs> of late oh. night history. For instance, this bit, he, for a comedy bit, mm. spent NBC's money for this. Yeah. He bought the most expensive car in the world. Yeah. He bought the most expensive car in the world and played the I Can't Get No Satisfaction mm -hmm. because that is the most expensive song to play on oh, television. Goodness. Take a listen. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. There it is, the most expensive car in the world dressed up like a mouse. 
And as you can hear, the mouse's theme song is the original master recording of the Rolling Stones classic, Satisfaction. Now let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Is this appropriate music for a car that looks like a mouse? No! Does it add anything at all to this comedy bit? No, it doesn't. Is it crazy expensive to play on the air? Not to mention the rights to re-air this clip on the internet? <laughs> Hell yes! That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Total price tag for this comedy bit, $1.5 million. He spent $1.5 million. <laughs> He bought a car yeah. just to dress it up in bunny rabbit ears yeah. and played that music behind it as he revealed the car. Hey, there you go. Talk about somebody sticking it to NBC. Take my job away from me again. Now, Jimmy Kimmel, yeah. who hosts a late night show on ABC, he is interviewing... Where, Jay Leno brings... He brings Jimmy Kimmel via satellite on for an interview. Yeah. And instead of Jimmy Kimmel answering anything that Jay Leno asks, yeah. Jimmy Kimmel answers by just ripping into Jay Leno for taking Conan's job. Ooh. Take a listen. You're known for pranks. What's the best prank you ever pulled? I think the best prank I ever pulled was I told a guy, I told a guy that Five years from now, I'm going to give you my show. And then when the five years came, I gave it to him, and then I took it back almost instantly. Wow. Wow. It was hilarious. Wow. Ever order anything off the TV? <laughs> like NBC ordered your show off the TV? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Strippers I don't like in general because you have this phony relationship with them for money. Similar to that of when you and Conan were on The Tonight Show together, yes, yes, passing yes. the torch. Right, right, yes, yes. You know what I'm saying. Yes, yes, I yes. do. Yes, I We have lives to lead here. You've, you've got $800 million, for God's oh, wow, sake. Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> Talk about ripping into somebody, and he didn't even have to do it. He had no dog in that fight. Well, I mean, was that, I'm assuming that was not a planned thing. No. Oh, that makes it better. Not a planned thing at all. There was the infamous uh, David Letterman in interviewing Paris Hilton. Oh, it made her cry. Well, it was Lindsay Lohan he made cry. Oh, I thought he made Paris uncomfortable it, and cry too. Almost to the point to where she did, but she didn't. Yeah. Uh, it, you have the Johnny Carson's last television TV, his last television appearance, which was on David Letterman's show. He came out briefly for 30 seconds to sit behind David Letterman's desk and then he said, nope, and he stands up and walks off. Oh, goodness. But that was the last time you'd ever see him. Yeah. And then when David Letterman and sit back down. He said, whew, the seat's still warm. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Maybe it'll rub off. Uh. But also, this is one of the most iconic late night uh, talk show moments in history. It was when David Letterman gets blackmailed. Oh. Now, this is a serious one, but yeah. only David Letterman can come out on top of this because of his delivery. Yeah. He's brilliant with his delivery. So what happens is David Letterman uh -huh. uh, goes to work pretty early, and he goes out to his car and finds a package on his car. Oh. And he says inside the package was a note saying that, uh, that he they know that he does all kinds of terrible things. Oh. And that they're going to make a movie about it yeah. if he don't pay uh, him $2 million. Oh, and gosh. he had listed out all of the things that he <laughs> that he had done. <laughs> like a laundry list. Yes. Take a listen at David Letterman talking about it on the air. Now, this is a very serious moment. David Letterman, I have to hand it to him. He got in front of this. Mm -hmm. He went on the air that day because he's getting extorted. He went on the air that day. Think about this. This was during, back when he didn't have real job security. They mm -hmm. could have fired him. Absolutely. So this is David Letterman talking about it. Take a listen. So uh, I get to, to looking uh, through it, and uh, there's a, a letter uh, in the package, and it's, uh, it says that, uh, uh, I know that you do some terrible, terrible things, <laughs> and I can prove that you do these terrible things. And sure enough, contained in the package was stuff to prove that I do terrible things. <laughs> So he goes on and and continues the story, and here is a continuation of his monologue. Uh, the creepy stuff was that I have uh, had sex with women who work for me on this show. Now, my response to that is, yes, I have. <laughs> I have had sex with women who work on this show.
And, and would it be em embarrassing if it were made public? Perhaps it would. Perhaps it would. Es especially for the women. <laughs> you got to love the fact that he got in front of it. He, he did. He told exactly what he uh -huh. was being extorted for. Mm -hmm. And guess what? It disappeared. And you know what? Because you can't extort somebody if they're willing to just stand up and tell the truth. Yeah. He was married at the time. Yeah. And he had a baby. And that's why it was so bad. He had an affair. He had sex with people who worked on his show. Yeah. And he got in front of it and said, is this true? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. I have had sex with people who work on my show. He didn't lie. He didn't lie. And guess what? It went away. Good. Yes, it went away. Uh, here is, I just found it, the David Letterman Paris Hilton clip. Oh, gosh. Uh, how'd you like being in jail? Uh. <laughs> I'll tell you Not too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God, that was, that was just a horrible thing. God, wasn't it horrible? <laughs> well, obviously it was a very traumatic experience. God, was it? You know, I, and I, 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 I think, did it, so yeah. I, can, I feel like I can do anything else. You can else. survive it? He, he ended up. That's all they talked about. Yeah. She was like, I'm here to talk about other things. Can we talk about this, this, and that? And he's Anything like, other He's thing. like, no, I'm only wanting to talk about that. Oh, gosh. Yes, but there are so many that we didn't get to. There is the Nicole Kidman letting Jimmy Fallon know that she liked him back in the yes. day. Yes. And she, he acted like he wasn't even interested uh -huh. in her. Uh-huh. There is the time when Jennifer Garner tried to outsmart Conan O'Brien, but people forget Conan went to Harvard. Oh, gosh. And uh, she tried to say, Conan said snuck. Yeah. And she said snuck wasn't a word, and Conan grabbed the dictionary and read yeah. it. And oh, said, wow. Yes, Look at there. Uh, yes. There is the Mark Summers versus Burt Reynolds, where oh, they kind of oh, went at it and threw coffee on each other. Yeah. And then there is the Jimmy Kimmel, Matt Damon feud. Uh, that was one of the best feuds I've ever seen. Yes. It and, was hilarious. Yes, and it's still kind of going. Oh, my gosh. Where you don't really know if they like each other. Do they? Uh, Maybe. They have to to keep it going as long as they have. Exactly. Because they both are getting recognition off of it. Oh, exactly. But yeah, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Some of the best late night talk show moments in history. And I thought that was appropriate to bring up since apparently we're seeing the beginning of the end for late night television because the late, late show is going away after 28 years on the air. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break. Stick with us. We still have lots more off the cuff coming at you live after these words. He's on Stop the music. Welcome back, everybody, to Off the Cuff. Adam Banks here with you. Amber is also in studio with me. Sorry, Rihanna, I'm going to have to stop the music because we have a segment to do. So you really did like Rihanna's performance? In all sincerity, I'm telling you, I, I really thought it was a great performance. I do love the Super Bowl because it is the biggest betting day of the year. Seriously, it's the biggest betting day of the year. Without sports betting, nobody would care about the Super Bowl. Yeah. I mean, people pretty much don't anyway. It's it's <laughs> mainly for the commercials and the halftime show. But yeah. If it wasn't for sports betting, nobody would care. I love the prop bets that are at the Super Bowl. Those are the silly little bets that you can make before the game starts. Like I was going to say, I have no clue what that is. That's like, what's the coin flip going to be? Heads or tails? Oh. Uh, who will the camera show first? Patrick Mahomes? <laughs> are you serious? Patrick Mahomes or Andy Reid? Yes. Things like that. How long yeah. will the national anthem be? Over one minute? Under one minute? Things like that. You can bet on it. Now, there's a max yeah. to how much <laughs> that you can bet yeah. because you can guess things like what color is the Gatorade going to be are that they serious? throw on the coach after the game. So, you have to put a max on it because think about it if yeah. you were on the team i'd just text you and say what color's the gatorade yeah you would tell me i'd place a bet guaranteed money right yeah so they have to max they have to put a max on on these prop bets but here are some of the best prop bets that i i saw and here are the results of them so you have national anthem prop bets over under two minutes and seven seconds, it actually went under. Oh. I think a lot of people thought it was going to be a lot higher than what it was. It was actually two minutes and one second. Okay. Because usually country singers like to slow it down a little bit. Yeah. Uh, who was shown first, Mahomes or Hertz? It was Hertz. The shown last during the national anthem. Uh, would it be a Chiefs player or a staff of the Philadelphia Eagles? And it was a staff of the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> Why was that so specific? The 
a coin toss, heads or tails, you could bet on heads or tails. Yeah. Always bet tails. <laughs> You're betting probability on probability. Absolutely. <laughs> always bet tails on a heads yeah. or tails bet. I don't know why, but tails always wins in my in my uh, just history well, with there that. There you go. <laughs> uh, will Chiefs win the coin toss? Yes or no? You could have bet on that. Eagles win. Yes or no? The halftime prop bets. So it says here, what will Rihanna's first song be? Yeah. And it had a list of songs that you could choose from. The winner, of course, was B, Better Have My Money. Uh Uh-huh. The last song performed during the Super Bowl halftime show, I would have got this one right, Diamonds. Yeah. That was the last one. Uh Will um, will an umbrella be on stage during Rihanna's performance? Yes or no? I don't think it was. No, No, it wasn't. Uh, Will Rihanna expose a butt cheek? No. Uh, will Rihanna announce she is pregnant? Verbally, no. Visually, yes. Mm-hmm. So I would like to see how they paid that out. Because <laughs> she was announcing she was pregnant. She kept rubbing her belly. I she said, did. She's either got the worst case of gas yeah. in the world or she's pregnant. She's got the rumble to him. Will Rihanna wear sunglasses? Yes or no. And it was no. Yeah. And the total number of songs performed that you could choose. Yeah. Take a guess. Pick a number. I was How there like songs? seven. There were 12. Oh, gosh. Yes. So broadcast props. First commercial, Doritos versus M&M's. M&M's won that one. Will Tom Cruise parachute into the stadium to hand deliver the ball? Yes or no? <laughs> no. He didn't. <laughs> that, Wait, has he done that before? It was rumored that he was going to do it. <laughs> I would have loved that. <laughs> How awesome would that have been for Tom Cruise to parachute in the stadium and hand you the game ball? Uh huh. Thank you, Tom. Look at that. How many TikToks will Jackson Mahomes post during Super Bowl? Ten. Zero. Oh. The answer is zero. A lot of people probably lost money on that. Yeah. A lot of people probably thought like you did. Ten. But it was zero. Well. Here are some answers to some Super Bowl 57 game props here. Uh, The game points, uh, the game total, 51 points. It actually went over that for 73 points. Which player will score the first touchdown? The answer is uh, Jalen Hurts. Who will be the MVP? The answer is Patrick Mahomes. Who will the first scoring play be? Or what would the first scoring play be? It was a touchdown. Uh, will the coin toss be heads or tails? It was tails, or tails. And then finally, the color of the liquid uh, for the Gatorade shower. The answer was purple. Oh, I'd have said blue. You could have guessed between a couple of colors. Blue, purple, yellow, orange. But yes, the answer was purple. Look at there. Absolutely. So that's that's just one of the reasons why I love the Super Bowl. Because you've got that. Yeah. Yes. Now, like, when you say max bet on it, like, give us a ballpark. <sighs> oh, like I would you say... You ain't going to go in there and drop a meal on color of Gatorade, can you? Right. I would say, I would say, yeah, they're, they're not going to let you do that. Yeah. Yeah, they're not going to let you <laughs> do, any, do anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. But what we are going to do is take Off the Cubs song of the week break. So sit back, relax with a little Die Another Day by a previous Super Bowl performer, Madonna. We'll be right back after the song. Now, Madonna has sang in the Super Bowl before. I th- not too long ago. Yeah. I say that, but it was like 15 years ago. I was going to say, wasn't it a long time ago? Yeah, I don't see her <laughs> getting up there anytime soon yeah. and doing a Super Bowl, unless they do like an iconic legend type Super Bowl where they have all kinds of old people. Didn't she fall? I think somebody like tripped her or something. She tripped over on two feet <laughs> yeah. a little bit. Not if the... Madonna can do it at the Super Bowl, everybody just <laughs> calm down. It's fine that you do it just yeah. where you are. Not the best place. <laughs> Why is it funny when people fall? Oh. It's funny when people fall, but it's hilarious when people fall, like, in public places like that. I think it's because it's the one time where you really have no control <laughs> over your body. It just shows how human everybody is. It does. Yeah. And you really have no control, and you and you get to watch that person really go all out. Yeah. Like trying you, to keep their balance up. Can't even walk right. I don't know what's funnier, watching just people fall or trip over stuff or slip it on ice. Oh, Slipping on God. ice might be the funniest. It's slipping on ice hurt, so I'm going to go with the fallen. Slipping on ice does hurt. When I see people fall on TikTok and things yeah. like that, it hurts me uh-huh. to see that because you know, because when you get older, when you fall, uh-huh. your bones are more brittle. Oh, my hips can't take that kind of 
impact. So people falling, you know that hurts. And then it just seems like a, dom- a domino effect. Uh-huh. The daddy falls going out the door, oh going down gosh. the steps. And then the mom falls. Then Sissy and Bubby falls. Uh-huh. Well, it'll be like the doodle fall. And then he'll yell up, don't come down the stairs. And then there, you know, the whole family's going down the driveway. <laughs> or the wife's like, oh, God, are you okay? And she comes running and choo, 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 choo. <laughs> And now you both going to the ER. <laughs> Good times. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we still got one more segment to go. Stick with us. We will be right back. Welcome back, everybody, to Off the Cuff. Adam Banks here with you. Amber is also in studio with me. Last segment of the hour. The time always flies by here on the show. An hour just isn't long enough. It's been a good show. It's been a fun show. It has. I do want to let everybody know that next week we will have a guest coming in the studio. ABC 36 evening news anchor Erica Bivens will be in the studio to talk with me. And I'm looking forward to talking with her and getting to see her. I haven't seen Erica yeah. in, well, since midday went off the air, so or since midday got canceled because of COVID. When was that? About two years March, ago? March 2020. Yeah. I've not seen her since, so I'm excited to bring her in, talk reunion. with her. Yes. ABC 36 reunion. Absolutely. And she'll be here next week, so tune in for that. I'm excited. Me too. I'm not missing work that week. <laughs> kind of a nervous about it though because I've not seen her in so long and yeah. I don't know she's so put together and so poised yeah I just and you know here at Off the Cuff we're not oh no <laughs> and I just it will be an interesting interaction well but you can check that interview out next week that's when she will be here and we're here at Off the Cuff we have been celebrating Black History Month. It is February the 16th, and Black History Month is a time set aside in February for us in America to celebrate African Americans and all their great contributions uh, to the world. And the first person we talked about was uh, Rosa Parks. The second person we talked about was Martin Luther King Jr. And this week, I would like to talk about more than just one, okay. actually a group of people, all of the black inventors okay. that have been out there. So many black people have invented things that we still use today. Mm-hmm. So many black people have invented things that are so useful mm-hmm. today. And I would just like to go over some of the most fascinating inventions done by an African-American. Okay. So we'll start with the security system. Mm-hmm. because. Because of a black person, we have a security system. Mm -hmm. It was created in 1969 by Marie Van Britten Brown. Okay. Yes, she created her own security system for her home because she, because she was scared. She was a New York City resident, mm-hmm. so she created a security system. Oh, thank you. I love mine. Automatic elevator doors. Yes. Used to back in the day, you had to close mm-hmm. elevator doors yourself. Now, was that her job on Family Matters? Harriet Winslow? Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's why they had elevator operators, yep. and you could fall out of them. Uh, oh. Yes. Wow. They was not safe. So automatic elevator doors were invented by Alex. Alexander Miles in 1887. Okay. Elijah McCoy, who uh, some people call the real McCoy, is known for creating the portable ironing board. There we go. What would you do without an ironing board? I mean, I don't iron my clothes, so I would just keep on rolling. I have to. I know. And if I <laughs> uh, if I didn't have the ironing board, I would be I would be in, in trouble. <laughs> the central heating furnace design. Well, actually, before I move on from Elijah McCoy, he also invented the lawn sprinkler. Hey, you yes. love a good sprinkler. Yes. Yeah. Alicia Parker created the central heating furnace. There we go. So just think about that. Central heat yep. was created by a black lady. Hey, thank you. The three light traffic signal. Yes. That we use every day, mm-hmm. that we see every day, was created by an African-American, invented by Garrett Morgan in 1923. There we go. The carbon light bulb. Mm-hmm. was invented by Louis Latimer in 1881. Now, a lot of people think Thomas Edison when it comes to electricity. Of course, he perfected electricity in the light bulb. But innovation 
happens mm-hmm. because of people like Thomas Edison. And then uh, this guy named Louis Latimer created the carbon light bulb, which we use today. It's a, it's a longer-lasting light bulb. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, a light bulb wouldn't last you a long time. So <laughs> None of that 90-day guarantee back then. None of that 90-day guarantee. So... Uh, and there were so many more. Oh, you're leaving off a big one. Which one then am I leaving off? I'm pretty sure the gentleman's name was James West, and, and he created the microphone. There you go. Yes. The, what we're using today. Exactly. Created the microphone. No karaoke would be done without this man. No radio. No radio. Yes. No Rihanna performances on a microphone. What do you, is there anybody else that I, I left off? That was my big one. That, that was my big one. That's a big one. That is. That's a big one. And you just never know, folks, of where this came from, where that came from. Uh, just look into it. You'll be surprised to find out where and, and who it came from. And uh, I just thought it was worth mentioning since... It is Black History Month. So shout out to all the great African-American inventors out there. You have made life a lot easier for us. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that about wraps up another episode of Off the Cuff. If you liked what you heard this week, you'll probably like our previous episodes. So subscribe to us on podcast. We're on Spotify. We're on Apple Podcasts. We are on YouTube. Heck, we're anywhere podcasts can be found. You can follow the show on social media at Off the Cuff with Adam Banks. You can follow me, the host, on social media at The Adam Banks. You can follow the co-host on social media at Ambu447. We release new episodes every Thursday from 4 to 5. If you haven't downloaded the Radiolex.us app, or if you haven't downloaded the Radiolex app, do that. So you can listen to us live every Thursday from 4 to 5. Be safe out there, especially in the Kentucky area. Watch out for high waters. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, that is Ember Turner. I am Adam Banks, and this is Off the Cuff. We'll catch you down the road. Mm-hmm.